Section four, multiplication and division, that's likely going to be easier than addition and subtraction because now we don't have to worry so much about the denominator or that the denominator has to be equivalent or they have to have a common denominator. Here we can actually run the multiplication and the division problems straight with the numbers that we have. So for example, if I want to multiply two thirds times five eighths, relatively easy, we're just gonna take two times five, which is 10, multiply that and we're gonna multiply three times eight, which is 24. So the results, 10 over 24, which we can further reduce down to five twelfths. Now, having said that, we can then see that there was some cancellation that we could have used to make the computations even easier, right? So we're gonna look at our numerators and our denominators and see if there's any way that we can actually reduce them further before we actually run the final numbers. The question becomes, are, are there any numbers here that, that are evenly divided into the numerators and the denominators? And the answer is, yeah, the two in the first, the first number of two thirds, the numerator of two thirds, the two, can be reduced because it's divisible by two. In fact, looking at the five eighths, the five eighths, the eight is also divisible by two. So let's do that. Two divided by two gives us one. So we're gonna keep that one now. That two has been reduced to one. And then we'll look at that eight and see, okay, can two, two goes into eight, how many times four? So now we have reduced these numbers or we've canceled out these numbers so that now we have one and four, which will make our final computations a little easier. So now for us to then run the numbers, we're simply gonna take one times five, which is five, and then three times four, which is 12. So the results, the answer to the problem can be solved this way as well as this way. Five twelfths and five twelfths. They're both gonna come with the same answers, but the difference is that we didn't have to take this number and reduce it further. We simply had the lowest, the lowest numbers we needed in order to make these numbers work. Okay, those are relatively easy, so you can work on those. Now, in this case, whenever we have a mixed number and that we wanna multiply that mixed number to another mixed number, so the example here would be three quarters multiplied by eight and two thirds. When we have that kind of a situation, the easiest way to solve this is to convert the mixed number into an improper fraction. So as an example, three and three quarters times eight and two thirds. Well, let's flow down here and follow this carefully. Three and three quarters can be converted to an improper fraction. How do we do that? Well, four times three is 12 plus three is 15. So that now means the numerator is 15 and we're gonna bring down the denominator. So three and three quarters is the same as 15 over four. Eight and two thirds, eight and two thirds can be further reduced as well. How do we do that? Well, eight times three is 24 plus two is 26. Eight times three is 24 plus two is 26. So we have 26 over three, the denominators carried over. So now we have 15 over four multiplied by 26 over three. So 15 over four multiplied by 26 over three. Those are really the same numbers as before, except we've converted the mixed numbers to improper fractions. 15 fourths times 26 thirds. Now we can further see if this can be canceled out, if some of this can be canceled out. Well, the four and the 26, well, both of those are even numbers. 
so they can be reduced by two. Four divided by two gives us two. 26 divided by two is 13. 13 is a prime number, so you're stuck there. That's not gonna move anywhere. 15 and three can be reduced by three. Three can go into each one of those evenly. So three divided by three is one. Three goes into 15 five times. So now we're canceling these numbers out so that we have five, 13, two, and one. Now we simply take five times 13, five times 13, which is now 65, so we have our numerator resolved, and then two times one is two. So 65 over two, and then that's an improper fraction that can now be converted to a mixed number, and this example here is 32 and one half. The practical application, if you wanna be a cook, if you wanna be a good cook, Often you're gonna be dealing with recipes, or in this case, it's not even cooking, it's baking. But without regard to whether it's cooking or baking, if you have a recipe, then you're often gonna be given ingredients that are gonna be in whole numbers and fractions. Now, the recipes are gonna be in a certain amount of numbers or size. So this recipe here gives us about five dozen cookies, but the question is, is well, what if we don't want five dozen? What if we want half of that? Or what if we want double? Find the amount of uncooked oats needed if the preceding recipe for oatmeal chocolate chip cookies is doubled or multiplied by two. Now we're gonna use the multiplication that we've learned in the previous parts or sections. And what are we looking for? So we're looking for uncooked oats. Do we know where uncooked oats is? Uncooked oats, there it is two and one half cups of uncooked oats. That's gonna make five dozen, but looks like we want 10 dozen because we're doubling this. So how do we take two and one half cups and double it? Well, we're gonna take two and one and a half cups and multiply it by two. Well, how do we do that? Two and one half cups multiplied by two. Well, first we're gonna take this mixed number and convert it into an improper fraction. Two times two is four, plus one is five. So five over two multiplied by, well, we just have two, but if we want that two to be in a fractional form, that's two over one. And we can just run the fraction or we can see if there's any cancellation. Well, there are twos here, so we can cancel those twos. We'll reduce that, that's one and one. And now we simply take five times one, that gives us five, and one times one is one. So five over one, which equals five cups. Now you probably could have eyeballed that, saying, oh, two and a half cups twice is gonna be five, but these are the formal steps you need in, in order to solve the problem. Okay, dividing fractions is very similar to multiplying fractions, very similar with one exception. We need to invert the second fraction and change to a multiplication problem. So the second fraction, often referred to as the divisor, we're gonna take the divisor and flip it and then multiply it. So in other words, 3 eighths, three eighths divided by 7 ninths, when we flip or inversely, we flip this fraction so that the nine is over the seven and then we can multiply. By doing this now, we'll solve the division problem. So in other words, three eighths times nine sevenths is the same as three eighths divided by seven ninths. Once we figure this out, three times nine is 27 and eight times seven is 56 then we recognize that 3 eighths divided by 7 ninths is equal to 27 over 56. Those are relatively easy problems to solve, so I'll let you get at it. And there's notes there in case you need to get to them. All right, in this case, we're looking at multiplying or dividing by whole numbers. And we're going to take the mixed fraction and convert it to an improper fraction. And then we're gonna take this three, this whole number, 
and write it as a fraction as well. So two and two fifths is a mixed number that can be converted to an improper fraction by two, five times two is 10 plus the two is 12. So we have the 12 is the numerator and we're gonna divide that by five. Five carries over as the denominator. So 12 over five, three over one three over one. But now because it's a division problem, we're gonna invert the divisor or the second fraction. So we're gonna invert it so that now three over one is one over three. Just flip it upside down. Now we can multiply it. Once we have the multiplication in place, once we have the multiplication in place, now we can see if there's any cancellation that can occur. While well, the 12 and the three can be canceled, three goes into both evenly. Three goes into three one time, three goes into 12 four times. So we are left with four over five and one over one. So four times one is four and five times one is five. So the answer to the first, to the question is two and two fifths divided by three equals four fifths. Okay, I think you can work through those problems and be okay. Let's move on to section five. 